Well, welcome everyone. We are glad you are here and uh, we are in Holy Week. This is uh, Monday in Holy Week morning prayer. The gospel for the Eucharist today is the story of Jesus having his feet anointed. So I put that up as the uh, as the artwork for the day, even though that doesn't bear at all on our daily office readings. I just wanted to offer that up because we're not actually having a Eucharist today, which is a break for us um, and uh, we miss it. But I just wanted to lift that up. So there you have it. If you are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. We're always posting content. We're glad and honored to have you with us. I want to thank everybody who bore with us as well, uh, both on Facebook and on YouTube with our um, technical issues yesterday. And uh, and and uh, it was nice to have everyone chuckle along with us as we had to restart the service because of the drop in the video. Still don't know what caused that, um, but we're glad. We're glad you are here. Okay, here we go. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Uh, Monday. And let me get this in real quick. And I'm sorry for my sneezing. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. It is one heck of an allergy day for me. I'm, I'm on two sets of meds and I'm still sneezing. So. Must be spring. Must be Holy Week. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Maybe your magnolias will bloom. There you go. Actually, they are blooming. They just popped a lot yesterday as we were doing uh, Palm Sunday. So, and the and the cherries, one of the cherries is also bloom. So, um, Nancy, if you'll take first, and Laura, you'll take second, and I will anchor and lead us in. All right, folks, most welcome. Let me call us up here on Facebook feed so I can say welcome to everybody. Um, if you have any particular uh, intercessions or concerns, please do put those in the comments, either on YouTube or in the Facebook feed. We'll make sure they get prayed for. Facebook will do it live, and with YouTube, we'll make sure it gets prayed at the next office, which will be evening prayer today at 5 p.m. Here we go. All right. Monday in Holy Week. Oh, give me a second. I was editing. Make sure we're at the right page before I switch this over. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. Today, if you would hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness at Meribah and on that day at Massa when they tempted me. They put me to the test though they had seen my works. Forty years long, I detested that generation and said, 
This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Today, if you would hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. The Psalm this morning is Psalm 51. I'll offer the odd, you guys will respond with the even. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God and put a new right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You will be in the right, O Lord, when I lay charges against you. But let me put my case to you. Why does the way of the guilty prosper? Why do all who are treacherous thrive? You plant them and they take root. They grow and bring forth fruit. You are near in their mouths, yet far from their hearts. But you, O Lord, know me. You see me and test me. My heart is with you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn and the grass of every field wither? For the wickedness of those who live in it, the animals and the birds are swept away. And because people said, he is blind to our ways. If you have raced with foot runners and they have worried you, how will you compete with horses? And if in a safe land you fall down, how will you fare in the thickets of the Jordan? For even your kinsfolk and your own family, even they have dealt treacherously with you. They are in full cry after you. Do not believe them, though they speak friendly words to you. I have forsaken my house. I have abandoned my heritage. I have given the beloved of my heart into the hands of her enemies. My heritage has become to me like a lion in the forest. She has lifted up her voice against me. Therefore, I hate her. Is the hyena greedy for my heritage at my command? Are the birds of prey all around her? Go, assemble all the wild animals. Bring them to devour her. Many shepherds have destroyed my vineyard. They have trampled down my portion. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it a desolation. Desolate, it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate, but no one lays it to heart. Upon all the bare heights in the desert, spoilers have come. For the sword of the Lord devours from one end of the land to the other. No one shall be safe. They have sown wheat and have reaped thorns. They have tired themselves out, but profit nothing. 
They shall be ashamed of their harvest because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus says the Lord concerning all my evil neighbors who touch the heritage that I have given my people in Israel to inherit. I am about to pluck them up from their land, and I will pluck up the house of Judah from among them. And after I have plucked them up, I will again have compassion on them, and I will bring them again to their heritage and to their land, every one of them. And then, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people, to swear by my name, as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, and they shall be built up in the midst of my people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this morning, the first song of Isaiah. Together, surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, bring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I, too, have a reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has a reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but there's one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle this morning, the song of the redeemed together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name, for you only are the holy one. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and then entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in a pr prayer attributed to St. Francis. And if you have any intercessions or thanksgivings, please offer those in the comments in Facebook or prepare them as we move to that section. Together, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I welcome your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for the repose of the soul of Erin and the consolation of her family as she passes from this life to the next. And on this day when the protocols for eligibility for the vaccine change in New Jersey, we pray for a just and equitable distribution of the vaccine and access for all who are in need, particularly for those who are challenged by technology by poverty or by access to obtain it. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear and hatreds cease that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We will see you again at five. A reminder that tomorrow we have morning prayer at 9 a.m., but we have a Stations of the Cross with Eucharist at 6 p.m., God willing and weather permitting, live here on the campus um, at the foot of the cross out on the lawn. Um, please do join us for that. You can sign up for that on our Sign Up Genius through our website, and uh, we hope to be able to offer that up. There will be no service um, with Stations of the Cross in Eucharist, which is our usual on Wednesday, because we are in the midst of serving our soup kitchen. And then Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, we have a Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m. Eucharist, a 12 noon Good Friday service, and then we have the Great Vigil of Easter at 6 p.m. on Saturday. And of course, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on Saturday night and Sunday morning. Sunday morning will be at 10. We'll repeat all this over again at <laughs> nauseum to remind you of the opportunity to participate in the life of Christ here at St. Peter's Day. For now, I bid you grace and peace. Take care and God bless. Bye.